All right, Joe to Cameron, John Rich, you were very fortunate as a show to have all the guests we have throughout the, the week. Typically, Ray Dittinger and Seth Joyner will join us on Mondays, but because it was a Monday night game, Seth today at 9 o'clock, Ray today, right now. Let's welcome the Diddy. Again, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, for the first time in three years, a regular appearance from Ray Dittinger here on WIP right after an Eagles game. He joins us right now. Ray, good morning, sir. Morning, Joe. How are you doing? Uh, I appreciate you, Ray. I just want to make sure you did say morning, right? Not good morning, because if so, that was a well done by you. It is a morning. It is not oh, a good morning. <laughs> With a you. Yeah. Oh man! All right. It is. It is. That's um, you know. There's no. <clears throat> there's no way of talking around it. I mean, I know people. There. You know, people would probably like to say today, oh, it's just week two of the season. It's a long season. They got a long. All that's true, but that is a game that if you're thinking about postseason and going somewhere and doing something in January this is a, this this was a game you could not afford to lose especially in the manner in which they lost it and now you know now you got a in a situation that's always a tough situation for any team uh, a short week going on the road uh, you're going up against you're going to New Orleans to take on the highest scoring offense in the league and you're dragging the 32nd ranked defense behind you that is not yeah. a good place to be it's bad it is Ray, Ray I want to I want to get to this point and I'm curious if you agree or disagree what bothered me the most last night is not that they lost and that they blew a game they should have won what bothered me the most last night is that I think they look like an ordinary team an average team and I would have said that even if they had closed that game out in the fourth quarter as they should have. Do you agree with that, or do you disagree with that? Uh, no, I, um, I, I can't disagree with that. I can't disagree with that. That's, that was kind of the feeling that I had watching it. Um, the, the, offense played, uh, the offense played okay. Uh, I mean, Barkley certainly played well. Uh, and Hertz played, I, th- I thought, quite well. I mean, it just seemed... Remember last week we were talking about the fact that he looked slower and reluctant to run and sure. all that. Well, yep. that wasn't true last night. I mean, last night he ran the ball often and he ran the ball hard and he ran the ball well in clutch situations. So that was, mm-hmm. to me, that was all positive. All the bad stuff was on the other side of the ball. Uh, and even though you were getting some red zone stops and even though you were getting some third down stops, there was just too much, too many other plays that Atlanta was making. Too many easy. Too, they're picking up too much yardage. They. Your front seven wasn't giving you any real support there, and I thought I thought they certainly looked at at best average defensively. I thought that I thought the offense, especially considering AJ Brown wasn't out there, I thought the offense looked okay, and I was actually pretty encouraged by what I saw from Hertz. But uh, defensively, yeah, I thought defensively, even if they had come out of that game with a win, I, I think we still would have been sitting here this morning talking about the defense. So when you say you're encouraged, for the most part, by what you saw from Jalen Hurts, uh, we're close, right? I, I felt like there were times where there was a pocket where it was stepping up into that thing. He was delivering on time. It did look like there were steps taken in the right direction with our passing game. It just wasn't quite enough in the grand scheme of things to get us a win last night. Yeah, that's um, that's sort of the way I saw it too. But I, I really thought that um, I, I really thought we've we said at the beginning of the year that the the ultimate disposition of this season, where this season is going to go, is, is so much about the quarterback play. I mean, it, you can talk about this and you can talk about that and and look at the team from a million different angles, but it it all comes back to, it all comes back to how he plays. Uh, and you know, my feeling was pretty much what it what it's been all along is that they have an awful lot of offensive weapons i mean in terms of their offensive talent i mean they're as good or better than every team in the league the one thing that they have to the one thing they have to get is get good quarterback play and a quarterback to play mistake free football which and i don't know that you can kill him for the last interception i thought that he showed you that last night and most of all he showed you the kind of aggressiveness willingness and decisiveness to be able to make those runs, to tuck the ball away and run the ball and pick you up big yards when you need them in clutch situations. Yeah. You know, that's something for this team to really, to, you know, to really get it together and, you know, and have a good year. He has to be that player, and I think you saw that last night. But the defense, I mean, we could talk about that all morning. I mean, the defense certainly didn't hold up its end of the bargain. You know, Ray, that, that hurts point. I just want to circle back to it. So I agree for the most part with what you said on Hurts. Here's the part – 
I disagree with, and I thought this might happen today. Because of how the game ended and how wild the fourth quarter was, and specifically the last two minutes, I think it's obscuring for a lot of people the reality of how much the Eagles left meat on the bone in the first half offensively. I thought Hertz was bad in the first half. Bad. I thought he, again, was leaving the pocket when he did not need to, and it resulted in drives ultimately not leading to points. What did you make of his first half? Not great. Not great. Um, uh, but I, I thought I, I certainly wouldn't say bad. Um, I, to me, the, the thing that I took away from the first half, uh, and I still feel today, was you know I, I thought the decision to, to go for it on fourth down on the second possession was just a mistake. I just, I just did. I mean, and, and, you know, it's easy to say now when you're looking back, you lose a one-point game and you look at three points you left on the field. That's an easy second guess. You know, oh, yeah, we should have kicked the field goal. I was saying it at the moment. I mean, I was saying it at the moment. I said, you take the three points. Just, just, just take the three points, okay? Early in the game, give me the points. Ray, let's um, – I'm sorry, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, I just feel that way. And I, and I know there are all the analytics people out there that are going to, are going to run all kinds of numbers at me about the percent. That, that, I mean, <clears throat> you know, your likelihood of converting that, and then convert, if you convert that, then you convert it. And all of that stuff, I, I know, I've heard it all. But in that situation, early in the game, you're looking at a chip shot, get the points, okay? Don't get cute. Get the points. And, and I, I said that when it happened. And, you know, ultimately it does come back and haunt you. But, I mean, it isn't just a purely a second guess. I, was I understand. And I, I, know, I know it's a reflection of the fact that, you know, I am very old school about this stuff. But when you have, it's your second possession, you've driven it all the way down the field, you're right there. Take the three, okay? Take the three and be happy with it. I just thought that was, I just thought that was too cute by half. And ultimately it does winds up coming back and biting you. Ray, let's get to the two, because I thought that was the first of three major decisions made in the game on those types of things. Let's get to the, the two near the end of the game. I'm just curious your opinion. To throw the ball to Saquon Barkley, I had no problem with it. I would expect him to catch it. Ordinarily he would. A lot of people are in up in arms that they took the risk of a pass that could lead to an incompletion and a stop in the clock. Are you okay with that decision, independent of knowing what the outcome will be? Um, no. No. I, I would have – Yeah, I mean, you can, say, you can say, oh, yes, the safest pass play in the book, and it is, but it's still a pass play. I mean, in that situation, the other team's got no timeouts. Just run the ball. Just run the ball. Uh, and, I mean, yeah, if, should he have caught it? Absolutely. If you throw him that ball 100 times, he catches it 99. I mean, again, you're talking, you're talking numbers, you're talking percentages, you're talking, you know, of course he's going to catch it. You expect him to catch it. Of course you expect him to catch it. But it doesn't mean he's going to catch it. Uh, in that situation, you had the game completely in your hands. I mean, Atlanta was utterly helpless at that spot. You run the ball, I mean, who knows, maybe you run the ball and get the first down. You but get the first down, the game's if, over, yeah. yeah. But, if, but, if, but if you throw it, there's always the chance that what could happen happens. And, and so, yeah, when I, saw the, when I saw the snap and I saw him roll out, I, you know, yeah, you see it unfolding. You're saying, well, this, yeah, he should certainly catch this, but he didn't. And, 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 Ray, because he, and because he didn't, you're sitting here one-on-one. Sure. No, that, that's right. If he catches the ball, the game's over. Ray, the next decision was the next play. Do you think Sirianni should have kicked the field goal as he did to go up six, or did you feel a lack of confidence in the defense – where you say, let's go for fourth and three with 142 to go, try it again and try to end this game right here by getting a first down and being done? No, no. I mean, I'm, again, kind of, you, um, you're, I mean, you're talking to the guy that just five minutes ago was, <laughs> was telling you I would have kicked the field goal in the mm-hmm. first period. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I would have kicked it right there. I mean, I would have just played it by the book. Um, but, this, but, you know, it was, it was a whole succession of things. And, 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 I mean, you've rightly identified all of them. And, we could discuss them forever, um, and it, it doesn't it doesn't change the. I mean, this this was about as bad a loss as you can imagine. It really was. I mean, there's no overstating it. I mean, it's your home opener, primetime TV. You got this, the stadium is completely rocking. You got a, an opponent coming in here off a really bad performance the week before, uh, with a quarterback who, frankly, when he went back and looked at the tape. If you looked, if you if you saw Chris Cousins in the game against Pittsburgh, I mean, he looked, he literally looked like a guy playing on one leg, and I even though I knew the Eagles had issues, um, I I really didn't see any way they could lose this game, and certainly at the the way it's ending with them just driving down the field and bleeding the clock and landing without a timeout, it looks like they're going to win the game. It don't look like world beaters, but it certainly looks like you're going to two and zero. Oh. 
and to let that one get away the way you let it get away is really rough. And, you know, and okay, here's where you are. But I think the one thing you can look at is, you know, now I think you're all, I think this is an early season gut check for this team. Really? It really is. I mean, you hate to, I mean, you hate to get there this way, but this is going to be a real, this is going to be a real good tell this week to see how this team, A, comes back from an absolutely backbreaking loss and B, prepares to go on the road in a short week to play a red-hot team with a very dangerous offense and with a defense right now that looks like it's got a lot of holes. The uh, the New Orleans offense is so heavily run-based. It is so grounded. And I want to say Derek Carr threw, I don't know, like 16 passes or completed. It was just such a small number. We, on the other hand, Ray, are pounding the rock, and Saquon – Two weeks in a row now has 26 touches per game. Like 26 touches week one, 26 touches week two. How sustainable is that? How do you feel about that number? Well, you know, it's kind of what, well, I think last night it gets a little bit skewed because, um, because you don't have A.J. Brown. You know, I think if you have A.J. Brown in a lineup, maybe the workload isn't quite as, isn't quite as great. But, you know, honestly, this is kind of what I thought it was going to be. I mean, when they made the commitment that they made, um, to go out and get this guy and pay the price that they paid to get this guy, um, then you've made a very big commitment to him. And you, know, you look back at Kellen Moore. I mean, Kellen Moore, he was the play caller in Dallas in, the, in Zeke Elliott's big years. And to me, Zeke mm-hmm. Elliott and Zaquan Barkley are very much the same kind of player. Uh, and the offense, wow. in yeah. a lot of ways, the offense is going to kind of have to run through him. So the play calling here doesn't surprise me. And if you look at the way Barkley has played, other than the drop last night, uh, I mean, he's been everything you could have hoped he could yeah. have been. And I think he will continue to be down the road. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a different offense, but I think that in many ways, it looks like it's going to be a, a really good offense. But last night, oh, geez, I mean, I, when, I looked at, when, I, when I went back and looked at the Atlanta-Pittsburgh game, and I looked at the, I looked at the film, and I looked at the numbers, um, I mean, we kept hearing last night about what a great offensive line the Atlanta Falcons have. I mean, they, they've, made, they've made that point over and over again, and I'm saying, really? I mean, did, did anybody see, what, did anybody see yeah. what they did against the Steelers? I mean, their pass, their pass block win rate in that game ranked 27th out of 32 teams last week. Now, look, I know mm-hmm. T.J. Watt, he's a handful, and Pittsburgh can get after you pretty good. But there was no evidence of that. And they only, and they, and they only blitzed like 15% of the time. It isn't like they blitzed a ton. I mean, they were winning, with, with, they were winning, with, they were winning the one-on-ones with their front four. That's what the Steelers did, and that's how they won the game. The Eagles, their, their problem was that they, that they couldn't win those one-on-ones with their front four. And that's really where the problem lies. I mean, I, so. yep. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked after the, after the Green Bay game about the, the lack of a pass rush from the edge. And I was trying to, you know, I was trying to, I don't want to say rationalize, but I was trying to say, well, listen, you know, it was a bad field, and maybe that had something to do with it. You know, I have to think that the pass rush is going to be better than that, and I think we can expect it to be better than that next Monday night. Well, okay, you're back here, you're playing on your home field, which you know is good, and the pass rush still was invisible. So, I mean, that's, yeah. that's a real big problem. You've got two real big problems in your defense. Is you've got to find an edge rush. It absolutely has to happen. And especially this week, to John's point, going into New Orleans against a team that's running the ball maybe better than anybody in the NFL right now, you've got to shore yeah. up the interior of your line. You've got to shore up your run defense. No, well said. Ray Denninger with us here. Joe DeCamera, John Ritchie. More with Ray in one minute. We're going to go through some of the specific defensive players. More with Ray in one minute's time. Hey, let me tell you about MHS Lift. You know, we're all hoping for a winner in town. Our football team, our, our baseball team, we'll see. October's coming up soon. Well, I know a winner for sure, and that's MHS Lift. The great team that's leading the way in the forklift industry in the Delaware Valley, Andy and Brett Levin, their squad at MHS Lift, an award-winning, nationally recognized material handling and equipment company that since 1970 has been offering everything that your warehouse needs, from forklifts and equipment rentals to racking solutions and warehouse optimization. MHS Lift does it all. And MHS Lift always puts the customer first, with over 100 service technicians on call. MHS, MHS, Lift, uh, MHS Lift maintenance programs, they ensure your equipment runs smooth, smoothly, minimizing downtime, maximizing efficiency, and they've got a simple mission to provide the best equipment, service, and integrated solutions to keep your operations moving forward. 
Are you ready to elevate your business? Well, call MHS Lift and call them today at 888-MHS-LIFT. You can also go to their website, mhslift.com. That's mhslift.com. Well, Ray, let's get to some specific defenders. And we can only imagine, John, how Seth Joyner is going to answer these questions in 15 minutes. But, Ray, (laughs) oh, boy, here we go. All right. Bryce Huff, is he just not good, Ray? We're, well, I mean, two games, you don't want to, you don't want to write off that kind of investment after two games, but um, I would have, I was, I was going to say, I don't like what I've seen, but the fact is I haven't seen it. I haven't right. seen anything. Uh, I mean, that's the scary part uh, is that he has been utter, he's been, I mean, he's been invisible. And the only, the couple of times that you did see him, I heard John say a couple of minutes ago that, you know, that he was getting handled and. And he was. There's no other way of describing it. And we've seen weakness and ineptitude. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's really a very good way of describing it, which is really troubling. And again, you know, and and what you were seeing last night in the in the little bit of limited exposure where you could actually kind of see him, where he actually shows up in the frame, (laughs) which is hard to believe. This is awful. It's bad, guys. It's bad. Sometimes he's not even in the frame, but. and I mean, not only was he giving you zero pass rush, which which has now been true for two whole games, uh, but on the occasion when he was on the field and they ran the ball, he is he is he's, he is either utterly unwilling or utterly incapable of setting an edge. And right. I, I know that was what I know that was kind of the scouting report on him coming out of the Jets. He had the big sack total last year, but he was no kind of a run defender. And whether it was he just wasn't good at it or he was unwilling to do the dirty work, I don't know. But the fact is he was a non-factor against the run. And then there were last night, I mean, a couple of the Bijan Robinson runs were because he just didn't set the edge. And uh, so, I mean, that's, you know, that, you know there's a, that, that's something you just can't live with. Now, I don't know. When, when you went back and if you, when you went back and looked at him at the, at the film from last year when it was the Jets and he, and he had the big sack total, um, I, I will tell you that just about all of the sacks that he got, he got with sheer speed. And yeah. he is. He, I mean, he is, he, is, he is very quick off the mark. He is very quick off the mark. First and step is, is and about, that, like, that's the scouting report on Bryce Huff. First yes. step, explosiveness. And then yes. what else? Well, <laughs> but that's the problem. If, if he can beat you with the first step, he will beat you. Okay? But if he can't, in other words, if that tackle or whoever is blocking engages him, Gets contact with him, gets yeah. a body on him. Trouble. Then, then Velcro. His, right. Yeah. His his te- his his technique with the all the other things you have to do, either in terms of your moves or how you use your hands or just the strength to shed, all those other things that you need. That second phase of the pass rush is totally gone. He either wins with the first step or he doesn't win. And yep. right now he's not winning. All right, wow. right. Two two final questions here for you. Same exact question, just different name. Nolan Smith. Is he just not good enough? Up to this point, I've, I've, my feeling has been I, I just don't know that he's gotten enough of a chance to show us what he is or what he isn't. Um, I mean, last, but, you know, last week, I mean, again, on a bad field uh, in, in Brazil, he got a lot of snaps and still didn't show up. You know, last night, I, I, I haven't had a chance to go back and look at the film, so I don't know how many snaps he got last night. But again, he's a non-factor. Um, wow. You know, I mean, and, and the fact is, I mean, right now you need somebody who's going to win for you on the edges, and you're not you're not getting it from Huff. And there's going to be more and more opportunities. I know they don't want to overplay Brandon, but you got to there, there's got to be more and more opportunities for Smith. He's got to show you something. But to this point, I can't tell you with a whole, even as a guy who loved that Georgia defense and the guys that came from there. Uh, and and cele- I was among the people celebrating when they drafted these guys. To this point, you need more, not just from him, but yep. from all of them. That's right. All right, Ray, final thing here. I'm curious your answer to our Twitter poll question of the day today, which is brought to us by Armin Chevrolet with it being truck season in Armin. Available 1.9% financing in all new 2024 light duty Armin Silverados. Together, let's drive to ArminChevy.com. Ray, which choice would you go with with today's poll? Who do you blame most for last night's loss? A, coaching, meaning the coach is. B, defensive lineman. C, Saquon, obviously because of the drop. Or D, Howie Roseman for his choices of who to assemble on the team. Who would you pick? For now, I'd say defensive line. For now, I would go there. I mean, we could – I think it's still a little bit too soon 
to judge how he's roster building. You know, I mean, it's, I mean, this we could have a whole different conversation next Monday. I mean, they go down to New Orleans. Who goes? Maybe, you know, maybe, you know, you know, maybe Bryce Huff goes down and gets three and a half sacks. I, sure. I don't expect that. I don't. But it could happen. But to, but to to put it on the roster construction week two, that's a little bit premature. Last night, I mean, last night you clearly you clearly can lay this on the defensive line because they didn't do the job against the run, and they certainly didn't get pass pressure. And the other thing was just on the side, completely put aside, is how sloppy the, res- uh, the team was in many respects. I mean, nine penalties. Totally. You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, we're going to get all caught up in all the other things, which we should. I mean, it was that bad of a loss. But don't forget just how sloppy they were. I mean, those penalties hurt. And, uh, and so those are all – I mean, this team has a lot of work to do and not a whole lot of time to do it. That's right. Ray, we'll talk to you next Monday. Let's hope it's a 2 and one squad. Let's, oh, let's, let's, hope, hope. let's hope the Saints are 2 and one all right? Two yeah. and one Eagles, two and one Saints next Monday. My fear is that's not going to be the case. We'll find out. Ray, stay well, well, buddy. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you, Ray. All right, take care. All right, Thanks, there he Ray. is, the Diddy.